Good afternoon, everyone. It is very good to see you all. Thank you very much for this initiative and for inviting me to be with you this afternoon. The brief that I have been given is to share a reflection on old age and ministry to older people in the light of the Holy Father's World Day of Grandparents and the Elderly. So I'm not sure precisely who will be listening to this. It may be some older people as well, some grandparents, and it's wonderful if you have joined us. And I hope that the words that I speak today will be of some encouragement to you. There's a beautiful line in the Pope's message for this first world day for grandparents and the elderly, which is the Lord never goes into retirement. And I think that is such a beautiful expression. The Lord never retires. He remains the same forever. St. Augustine in a wonderful reflection said, O beauty ever ancient, ever new. God is ancient and he's always new. And it is our faith that he can do the same for us. Even though we may feel a little bit ancient sometimes, he has the ability to make us new. In one of the Gospels, we read of how St. Peter is on the Sea of Galilee and Jesus comes walking across the water. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, bid me to come to you across the water. Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking across the water to Jesus. And then we're told he takes fright and he begins to sink. Peter was walking on the water until he took fright. He took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. So to all of you listening today, I think the first message is never take your eyes off Jesus. Always keep your eyes on the Lord. And as we know, as we grow older, we have reduced energy levels. We have increased pain in our bones. And there comes a stage when we know that we will never run a four minute mile or climb Mount Everest. But apart from that, we are exactly the same person as we were when we were young. I know whenever I look at myself, I know really my personality has never changed. Attitudes have changed, but my personality hasn't. So it, an important question is, how different am I than I was 50 years ago? And often that's a very difficult question to answer. I know a person who at the age of 70 was told of someone who was 60 and she says, oh, if I was 60, I would tell the whole world. Though she admitted when she was 60, she thought she was old. So the second thing is always accept your age. And that can be difficult too. To move forward, we always have to accept those things that we can do nothing about. And one of them is our own age. We don't boast about it, we simply accept it. In his message to you for this World Day, for grandparents and the elderly, Pope Francis speaks of three pillars. Dreams, memories, prayer. Those three pillars are connected. They go together because they're about the past, the present, and the future. Dreams are the future, memories are the past. And an elderly person, of course, has a lot of memories. And prayer is the present. God lives in the present. We will find God in the present. Though, of course, in our prayer, we speak about the past and the future. Whenever we speak to a younger generation, your grandchildren, for example, the most important things that you can give them is hope, encouragement, and confidence, and prepare them for the future. You are in a position to do so because of your own experiences of life. I'm sure that there are times in your life when things happened to you and you thought you were crushed. You might even have said to yourself, that's it, my life is over, no future for me. 
I shall never know happiness again. There's a passage in the prophet Isaiah when he says to himself, I have toiled in vain. I have exhausted myself for nothing. And perhaps there are times when you have felt like that as well. I've exhausted myself for nothing. And then Isaiah continues. And all the time my cause was with my God. My God was my strength. And he recovered from his trials, just as we recover from ours. <clears throat> I remember reading one time that mothers can identify from the way their infant cries what the problem is. And you mothers listening might know if that is true or not. I read that a mother knows if an infant is crying because it wants to sleep or have its snappy changed or is hungry and responds accordingly. In our own difficulties, God knows precisely what we need. He can read our hearts. I also read that the reason an infant gives such a painful cry when hungry is because the infant thinks its life is ebbing away. It's going to be extinguished. And there are probably times when even as adults, we felt the same. But what happened? We came through it. We put it behind us. Because of our knowledge that we were not crushed, we can encourage our grandchildren and young people to dream and always to have hope. The most important thing you can give to young people is to give them hope. It reminds me of another line from the Old Testament when it says, by his wounds, we are healed. Because of what you have gone through and survived, you can give encouragement to others. One of my favorite Psalms is the one which has the line, who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? And then it continues, the one with clean hands and pure heart who desires not worthless things. And the whole of life is like climbing a mountain. The top of the mountain actually is the moment of death. Until then, we have to invest some effort every single day. It may not be a great effort. It might be something simple like getting out of bed in the morning or going to the shops. But we can climb that mountain and enjoy the effort if we have clean hands and a pure heart because we know God is with us. I know one of the purposes of this group is to support each other, to support you, to campaign on certain issues which affect the elderly. And you're more likely to enjoy a mountain climb if you have company, if you've got someone to give you a hand. And of course, at this time, we are looking forward to the time when we can, as the expression is, open our doors and enjoy each other's company again. There is a saying among those in the health professions, which is, who cares for the carer? Who supports the supporter? Who consoles the consoler? And so on. When one is elderly, when one is a grandparent, one has different rules. There are times when you can console, you can comfort, you can support yourself. Whenever a younger person turns to you, you have lots of advice to pass on. But at the same time, we too need to be listened to and supported. And I hope that you will find that balance in your life with the support of this group and the support of your family and all your friends. That God will provide you the strength to give because of who you are. And also find the company which helps you to be refreshed and energized. Knowing that love and sacrifice go together, can never be separated, we show one perfectly in the life of Jesus. Love and sacrifice can never be separated. And I know that in your life too, those two elements are present. You love your grandchildren, your family, your friends, and at the same time, you sacrifice precisely because you love. And as we know, wisdom is often associated with old age. So let us be wise. Let us continue to love, continue to sacrifice, being aware that God knows everything about us and will never desert us. 
especially in our time of need. Thank you. Goodbye.